What's, go what's going on? Me, Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com. Back again with the NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Monday, December 5th. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite plays are, and then please, go sign up at BetMGM. They are the sponsor of this video. We have an incredible deal. You can see it on the screen right now. If you follow the link in the description, sign up and make a qualified deposit, you will get up to $1,000 in a risk-free bet. And since you're watching my video, I assume this is the interesting piece, two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum. That's a great way to start off a bankroll and to get in behind the paywall at Stochastic. Now, we're rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with Jalen Brown, PJ Washington, Clay Thompson, Trey Young, and O'Shea Brissett on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today, it's time to find out. First up at number five, I'm taking a look at Kelly Oubre. He's shooting guard, small forward eligible. So you also get guard, forward, and utility. Love the MPE. He's 7K, projected for 39 and a half. The goal is 45 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 19% of the time. Oubre's playing massive minutes. I got him in for 35 here. And Charlotte's playing a nine-man rotation with all these guys hurt. They just don't deviate all that much. So Kelly Oubre is a 1.1 fantasy point per minute guy. 28% usage, 23 real points, six boards, an assist and a half, a steal and a half. You get two stocks out of Oubre. It's a slight pace down spot against the Clippers, but it should also be very competitive. They're only two and a half point underdogs at home here, which means I think you get the full freight out of Oubre. And I think there's a couple extra minutes to go around if this one is ultra competitive. But between the MPE, the price, and his scoring role, I can't avoid him on an eight gamer. Similarly, I can't avoid Terry Rozier, who's basically the same guy today. Shooting guard, small forward eligible, 7,800. Projected for 44. The goal is 49. He's in the optimal lineup 20% of the time. 38 minutes for Rozier. I think that could be 40 or 41 in a competitive game. He's a 1.15 fantasy point per minute guy. Massive usage, 29%. 24 real points, five and a half boards, six assists, and a steal. Same matchup here against the Clippers. But again, if you're using Rogier and Ubre, shooting guard, small forward, guard forward, utility, you can move these guys around so much. It makes things so much easier to build out. And I don't know why you get shooting guard, small forward. I mean, he's essentially the point guard of this team right now, but it makes it easier from a roster construction standpoint. So I'll take what I can get. I love the minutes upside here for Terry Rozier, and the fact that this game can be competitive makes it look a little bit better. At number three, we head to Indiana for Benedict Matherin. He's shooting guard, small forward, eligible. So stop me if you've heard this before. He gets guard, forward, and utility as well. 5,400 projected for 34. The goal is 37. He's in the optimal lineup 21% of the time. We have no Tyrese Halliburton for the Pacers, which changes the entire scope of this team. It's possible there's also no TJ McConnell. So I get Mather in 30 minutes. He's a usage guy. 28% usage here with no Tyrese Halliburton around. I think he's like over a 1.1 fantasy point per minute guy in this situation. 23 points, five boards, two assists and a steal. It's a massive pace up spot against Golden State. They gain 2.9 possessions over their average. I just love this spot. I think Matherin plays these minutes sort of one way or the other. It's not a great matchup in that you expect Golden State to like absolutely hammer the Pacers, but I think that's okay. Maybe we'll get lucky. Uh, Andrew Wiggins has a Q tag. I think Jordan Poole also has a Q tag. Maybe they're a little thinner today. This game has the opportunity to stay a little bit closer, but it doesn't really matter. Matherin with no Halliburton looks fantastic. We go to the Atlanta Hawks for some value at number two for Jalen Johnson, power forward eligible 3,700 projected for 25. The goal is 28 and a half, and he is in the optimal lineup 25% of the time. 31 minutes here for Johnson. I assume he's just starting and playing the John Collins role. He's a 0.8 fantasy point per minute guy. Not a lot of usage here, 14%, but nine points, seven boards, two assists, and two stocks works out pretty well at a sub 4K price tag. He's starting, and I don't think that's changing. And I think the minutes just have to be there because they don't have enough guys that are like Jalen Johnson that could really take his spot. The better part here, though, it's a massive pace up spot against the Oklahoma City Thunder. So one, it's a five and a half point line. I expect a relatively competitive game. Two, Jalen Johnson doesn't have to worry about like Jalen Williams on the opposite side. These are like type players as well. All signs point to Jalen Johnson as the second best value play of today. 
Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder to please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. You got to follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. I need you to let me know in the comment section who your favorite plays are. And then I need you, I, I want you to go sign up at BetMGM using the link in the description so that you can get a $1,000 risk-free bet and two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum. Your number one contender for today is not even close. Andrew Nemhard is in the optimal 45% of the time. No Halliburton and potentially no TJ McConnell. Point guard, shooting guard eligible, 4,200. Projected for 34, the goal is 31. He's in the optimal lineup 45% of the time. I gave Nemhard 35 minutes and I think he can play more than that. 0.97 fantasy points per minute. 16% usage, 12 points, eight and a half assists, four and a half rebounds, a stock and a half. Pace up against Golden State, but even in a blowout, I think Nemhard has to play 30 plus, and at 4,200, that's fine. The downside risk of Nemhard just really doesn't exist, and the upside is basically that you absolutely have to have him. I mean, he hits his boom score of 31 62% of the time. You're just going to need Nemhard. He's the easiest play today. He's the first guy you put into every cash lineup. If you don't put him into a cash lineup today, at least as, like if Locke were in two minutes and you didn't put him in a cash lineup, you got to quit DFS all together. Andrew Nemhard is the number one contender. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Monday, December 5th. FanDuel version, it's around here somewhere, so check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. We are back again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.